Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here. My name, of course, is Monsieur Mokolover, and we're going to continue and finally finish up this Hearts of Iron 4 campaign as the Democratic United States of America. Right now, you're looking at uh, my military factories. I have over a thousand, and at this point, I am really not too concerned about them. So, I am literally picking up right off where we left off last time. And uh, if you recall from the very, very end of the last episode, we have a new partner, have a new ally to play with us, even though they should have been fighting all along, but you know, I understand why they didn't fight initially. And that is, of course, the Swiss. Actually, it should be the Swiss. Didn't they want to be in our faction last time? I think. I, I, as I was saying, th you know... Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you tomorrow. I thought they wanted to join the... F oh! Wait, hold on. Maybe they'll join. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, anyways, I had a comment yesterday. Oh, actually, the Axis is now green because Italy is the leader of the Axis instead of Germany because it capitulated. Regardless, uh, someone did comment. Uh, are you on scraping the barrel for your manpower or conscription levels? No, I'm not. I'm only on all adults serve, so I, I could theoretically go to scraping the barrel for 5% more population, but uh, I think over 9 million right now is pretty good. Pretty good number. Not really too concerned about manpower ever since I went to all adult serve. But yeah, that's pretty much... Ah, and there they go. Ah, see, there, there's a Swiss. Hello, Swiss people. Will you join? Uh, of course, you're just like the Roma Iranians. Not the Romanians, you're like the Iranians. As well as the Swedish, who took forever to join the frickin' war against the Axis. Be on the right side of history, kids. Whether you think it's right or not, it's still the right side. And if you don't understand what that means, I'll see you on the battlefield. Anyways, uh, we don't need to worry about this stuff. Uh, what are we not producing? Rocket or... T oh. Medium tanks, huh? Well, let's finally get rid of the last tank. Modern tanks, very cool. Uh, and we need rocket artillery, huh? Well, I got plenty of extra factories, I suppose. Let's get some of this, some of these guys going, and then we'll get some of, uh... Mm, advanced rocket artillery. And they need a lot of tungsten, it looks like. Yeah, they need a ton of tungsten, whatever. Don't really care. Let's see. Lots of Asian divisions that can be thrown onto here. Very nice. And, of course, Chile is dying over here. Typical. But, kudos to the Chileans. They are a very strong people. And we will gladly accept all of their help, whether they like it or not. Uh, actually, send a lot of you guys up here. And, apparently, the French don't really have very many divisions, so we're going to exploit that as fast as possible. And, Douglas MacArthur is trying to get to the line before the Germans, or I guess the Italians, or the French, try to do anything. So yeah, this will be the last episode in this campaign. Uh, just makes sense, too. Since we're pretty much done with the Axis, I'm not going to do a world domination, because that doesn't make any sense. And besides, we already have enough of the world in our uh, faction anyways. A good chunk of South America, all of North America, parts of Central America. Pretty much all, almost all of Asia is ours. Africa eventually will be ours after this episode. As we are just mowing down pretty much everyone who stands in our way. Like a true American. You get in our way, and you're probably going to die. Especially nowadays. Anyways. Um, yeah, I'll finish up this area. Just moving straight on into Paris. Okay, we have Paris now. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's take a quick look at casualties, because when we capitulate the Italians or Spanish, I'm probably not going to remember to look at the casualties. So, the Turks have lost over 3, almost over 3.4 million. The Italians are losing up to 8. The Germans have lost over 31.5 million, so we killed off at least... Like, over a third of the entire German population in Europe. Uh, munitions plant, sure. Hungary has lost 2 million, more than 2 million. Germany East Indies has lost about 300,000. The Vichy French, this is not Democratic French. They already lost a lot of casualties, lost a lot of men before. But the Vichy French, or Nation Francais, has lost a little less than 7.5 million. The Croatians decided to commit suicide and lose about a million. And the national national Spain lost about 6.28. That's a lot of a million guys from this part of the you know Europe is a lot of guys. 
Right, and they still have a little bit of manpower left, but they are, of course, on scraping the barrel. Alright, this isn't a Dunkirk, but we'll make it... We'll make it so, anyways. Alright, awesome. Convoy, awesome. Uh, tanks, no orders, huh? Well, well, we'll make sure you have orders. We will probably need the tanks to help break into... Italy. But the Balkans... I could use my tanks to help take out Turkey. Well, let's see. The major powers, of course, are Spain, Vichy France, Turkey, and Italy. That being said, fighting through Italy is going to be a pain in the butt. Fighting through all these countries will be a pain in the butt. Maybe except for France. Turkey will definitely be a pain in the butt. But, and this is a huge but, I don't want to split up my armies too much. So what we could do is I could have the tanks stroll into Spain while the rest of the infantry focus on Italy. Maybe. Or just try to have a breakthrough here. Hmm. Eh, whatever. We'll just finish off France as fast as possible. We'll just try to clear up any other resistances that, are at the, wait, that we currently have, anyways. Uh, we need a munitions plant, which doesn't matter anymore, in Maryland. Such a small state. Almost almost worthless. But they own D.C., so that's our capital. Which shouldn't be its own thing. But whatever, you know, I'm an American. D.C. is not a state. The reason why D.C. and Washington, D.C. is not a state is because they would give too much power to a single state. And the founders did not want anyone to be too powerful. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And that's why you should elect me as a dictator someday. Exactly. Alright. Let's see. Uh, we got enough coasts and divisions over here. Uh, do something like that. Maybe over here. Yeah, 290 are needed. Blah, blah, blah. 95. Yeah, that's pretty good. Don't think anyone's really going to navally invade. But then again, the Germans last time did invade Mecklenburg after we took it over. So... All right, tanks, you do your thing. Go ham diddle dam. Uh, let's see, ham diddle dam. MacArthur, your soldiers are on the line. They are ready to grow and go. I, I just want you to be careful. I don't want you to be too crazy. But air bases, we will need a ton of air bases to take out the rest of Turkey. Good Obar Bayern. Uh, radar actually is extremely good. So good that we have almost all of Europe covered. Wow. Um, you know what? Go ahead. Try it out. Try it out, guys. But be careful. Like, this 12 stuff, this 12 stuff isn't cool. Now, hopefully we can win and crush everyone else. And I will probably cu cut out a portion of me assigning the liberation of countries. So, we are pushing... Pushing, pushing, pushing. Maybe we'll do well. Maybe we won't. The Italians, as we saw last time, are out of that sweet, sweet manpower. They're out of Italian boys to send to the front line. The Turks are also out of boys. And the French have half a million boys left, as well as the Spanish have over probably around a million. Not too bad. How about the Turks have nobody here? Oh, but they're very weak. I don't... Oh, he's a level... Uh, he's got that level trait there. He has um skilled staffer. Awesome. Maurice Rose, good job. So now you don't get a penalty for having one more division than what you're supposed to. I don't want to do this, but do it anyways. Oh wait, you have no job. You need a job. Ooh. You can come over here next to Turkey. You will be the one who was originally supposed to go with Maurice Rose, our general right here, and fight the Turks as one of you guys made it down to Africa. But that's okay. That's definitely okay. So basically, if you keep attacking, you will wear out the Italian manpower, which they have none. And the Swiss have, of course, joined the faction, but they want to be peaceful. But they already said no to staying neutral. Come on, man. Come on. You know what? They'll join as soon as Italy capitulates or something. Or maybe even France. Or both. Ah, oh, coffee. Ah, oh, very good. And not my normal coffee. Very good. Even better. Ships. Oh, we lost eight Chilean destroyers. Wow. And another Chilean de destroyer. Wow. That's actually kind of interesting. Oh, Japanese and Chilean destroyers getting destroyed by destroyers. But you have a carrier. Okay. Uh, I guess I don't fully understand the naval meta still, but then again, who does? Just people like to say that carriers are weak. Relatively weak, especially compared to battleships in this new, new meta. Which I can understand. I can definitely understand that. Uh, but you always want to have at least one carrier if you have a battleship. Because while battleships still do a ton of damage... Uh, it's just 
you need carrier planes to help defend against other enemy planes. So it's always a good thing to have lots of carriers. Carrier fighters and carrier naval bombers. No. Carrier close air support I never use. I just don't understand the point of it. Oh my gosh, guys. Just I thought it I thought it gave you orders. Screw it. Send you guys down here. I don't want them to come back and like be like, huh, we're not really going. Alright, go ahead and do that because I want to send my tanks. Maybe to Italy, Spain, France, all these good places. Ah, uh, take out Shadborg. They're not gonna they're not gonna last very long. They got some manpower, but they're not very strong. And oh my god, Lucian Trescott, level seven general, skill level seven, versus that level one French guy. Yeah, that's that's not gonna be too bad for us. Not too bad. Oh look, we've divided Italy. Very awesome. Wow, that's a lot of green. That's Oh, Brittany has been cut off from the rest of the country. Very good. The Bretons. Very awesome. Take the stationary guy and just come down to the airport. Take over here. Get to Brest. Come on, tanks. Hurry up. Okay, you're not even freaking moving. God dang it. Come on, guys. Send you two down here. Take Antwerp. Very cool. And we, we're just pushing straight in. We already have Venice. Jesus. That's awesome. Um, You guys are not down here yet. No, but there is a potential encirclement being made right now. Ah, so good. Ah, the Spaniards are captured in Bul former Bulgaria. So good. Ah, so yeah. The next campaign for Hearts of Iron 4 will probably be vanilla. But probably Communist Britain, which I'm going to have to relearn how to play Britain, because that's actually kind of difficult. Playing as a British is not easy. But since I'm probably going to play a historically... Oh, there goes Fitchy France. Since I'm going to play a historically, I'm going to give myself a different type of... Oh, this is... Dis oh, Jesus, that's disgusting. I'm going to send the infantry, the tanks this way. But I will make it a historical, as well as... Why is there two Frances here? Nation France... Free France! Oh, God, no. No, the wor worst thing you could ever have is free Frenchmen. But, regardless, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna play A historically, and we'll have to see what happens from there, you know. So. Now, since I'm probably gonna go as commie Britain, I could release the colonies. By colonies, I, of course, I'm, I'm assuming. We're talking about the African colonies for the most part, and some Asian colonies as well. I may do that. Oh my gosh, how'd you lose a freaking carrier? Oh, good lord, that's not good. Regardless, though. Uh, actually, let's get let's get our uh, battleships, battle fleet worker. Uh, where's our good old fleet boys? Oh, you're down here. Cool. Hold. Uh, I'm probably not going to release anybody. I want to be as powerful as possible. I might release people eventually. I want you to rebase. Oh god, these are so crappy. These naval bases are so bad. Here, come to Leningrad, and then I'm going to help have them destroy any remnants of the German navy around here. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to assume as much power as possible, and then just kind of go ham against. Oh, I don't know, everyone. I'm not really sure who to set up. I'm probably going to keep the Soviet Union as you know communist, just because they don't really. The Russian really doesn't have a you know a normal focus tree like if you make them democratic or fascist or something or non-aligned Russia just has a generic focus tree that's not cool. Uh, if I go communist, I'll probably make Germany. Hmm. I, I'm probably going to keep the United States democratic. I don't know. Keep them democratic. Keep the Soviet Union communist. Maybe keep Germany fascist as well as Italy fascist, but make Spain. Democratic make, of course, keep France as democratic, but they're going to need probably more countries to help them out because France and Spain themselves are not super powerful. I mean, they're not they're not a pushover. I mean, well, maybe the uh, French are on your depending on your opinion, but just to balance things out a little bit better because I don't want to just have a, play a game where everyone's like communist and super easy to play or something. You know, I don't want it to be super easy. I just want a, an enjoyable experience. That being said, go ahead and kick these guys nuts in. All right. William Simpson, thank you very much. Mmm, this coffee's tasty. Slowly fighting through France. 
Ah, so many factories. Very good. Hmm. Ah. Rome. Can Rome be nuked? Not yet. There are a ton of divisions around here. Oh, we have a, do have a tank down here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, fighting through here is actually going to be a pain in the butt, so let's get rid of some of those guys. Marseille. As long as it doesn't hurt our infrastructure, that's what really matters, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the parameters, the end goal of a Kami UK or Kami England or Kami whatever you have... What would the end goal be? That would be an interesting thing. Would I don't want to do world domination, even though that would be definitely possible if you have enough puppets. Make at least all of Europe communist, maybe even the United States communist. That'd probably be a good idea, but trying to invade the United States is kind of difficult. But not impossible. I mean, I've done it before. I'll probably end up doing it again. Uh, we definitely have to nuke this position here, just because this is one of the worst spots in the game to ever try to invade Turkey through. The Straits of the Bosphorus. That's right, the Bosphorus. Right, or the Bosphorus was down here. Yeah. Never another Gallipoli. Anyways. Uh, Douglas MacArthur. I want you to crank it up. Okay. Well, that's not enough. Can you crank it up now? That's still not enough. Give them a couple, a little bit of time to prepare themselves. Oh, now we're getting attacked. That's good. How about a counterattack? Ah, there we go. Now you're cranking it up. That's what we like to see. Ah, very good. Very, very good. Oh, Northern Italy is almost all of ours. Why is why do I have my tank here? I thought I told my tank to be on this side, or down here. Huh. Well, it looks like a lot of Italians don't have a lot of strength, so I don't feel bad if we just decide to try to attack them. As the infantry are definitely pushing in through Catalonia and other parts of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, I really don't know my geography of Spain that well. Let's see, this is Castile. That makes sense, this portion is Castile. What is this part of Spain called? Navarra. Okay, and this is, of course, Catalonia. They always like to rebel. They're weird people, but aren't... Er isn't everyone weird in their own way? I think so. Uh, let's see, We have we have we broken across? Yes, we've broken across to Asia, which... I mean, we're already over here. We haven't broke... We, well, we've kind of broken down into Syria. Please don't, you know have ISIS spawn up someday. That would not be very cool. Uh, Syria's always... I, th I, think, I don't know why. Maybe I kind of like Syria. I like the shape of Syria, maybe. It's like a weird geometrical shape. So it's like a, almost like a straight line up here. And then it has like a weird curve. I don't know. I like curves. Whatever. Hmm. Lebanon. Oh, wait. Lebanon. Lebanon's not a part of Syria nowadays. But what if it was? That'd be kind of cool. I like, I like geopolitical borders. Whatever. Boundaries. Whatever. Uh, Douglas MacArthur is doing a pretty good job overall. Uh, ooh, this portion of Italy is not looking so good. No siree. The tanks are doing an okay job. Uh, probably our allies are doing... Okay, maybe the tanks are doing an not okay job. Where the hell are all my tanks? I thought I'd put them on the front... Oh, oh. Okay, not bad. Go ahead and help them out. Um, yeah, I thought I had more tanks on the front here, but, uh... I guess not. Okay, then. Well, just kill everyone here if you can. Uh, actually, can you get my subs to do... We can't do the Tyrion... Oh, we can do the Tyrion Sea, so you don't even have to be connected to go over there. That's what I thought you had to do earlier. Get rid of that. And... Wow, that's... I did not know that. This way I can hopefully kill a lot of convoys that are maybe coming over here. See what happens. Can I nuke Rome yet? No. Yes. Oh, and here come the Swiss. See, I told you. As soon as... It, France is gone. Most of Italy is not even close by. Uh, now, the Swiss will never be neutral again. That's all I can say. Is that the Swiss will never be neutral again. Cougar, do you have anything? No. You're still level 7 general. That's awesome. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Tanks, uh, just come in here and kill them all. Ah, yes, Rome. Uh, hopefully that got Benito Mussolini. Mm. Got to love the coffee. Got to love it. I'm I'm pretty sure I didn't tell my tanks to come down here, but you know whatever. Uh, let's see, Italy almost nine and third million casualties. 
Basically the same thing, a nuclear explosion struck the city of Rome today, shocking people around the world due to its historical and artistic treasures. Many had never thought the ancient city would be targeted of such indiscriminate destruction. Well, oh well. With the Vatican City also partially destroyed and the whereabouts of the Pope unknown. Oops, I killed the Pope. Oh no. <laughs> the event has horrified not only Italians, but Catholics around the world. Rome's rapid growth in the past decade has been nearly completely undone by the attack. Oopsie! For a while, it looked like the city could aid the nation's recovery after the war was over, though. Those hopes have now been d turned to dust, along with many people. Well, I might have killed the Pope, oh god. Oh god, I better say a couple more prayers on my rosary or something, right? But that's okay. The Pope didn't really do very much to stop this war, now did he? Then again, what could he do? He couldn't really do very much, I probably. Uh, yeah, this is a mess. The few tanks I have over here are doing okay. Oh, and of course we conquered Rome. But, uh, come on guys. Kill off the Spaniards. They're not t too difficult. I mean, we're advancing on all every single front. This is great. Advancing on the Spanish front. Definitely advancing on the Italian front. Advancing on the Balkan front, which is wrapping up pretty nicely. And of course we're advancing on the Turkish front. Remember kids, Turks are not Europeans. No matter what anyone tells you. Well, what we're trying. We're definitely trying to move in around here. You're doing alright. You're doing okay. Yeah, just, we got some time to kill before, as our guys just trying to kill everyone else. Very cool. Free ass. Uh, I'm sure, yep, almost at 16 million dead Americans, but their sacrifice will not be in vain. At the end of this war, the world will literally be reshaped uh, according to, you know, the economies of the world and whatnot. Like, even though we've suffered so many millions of dead Americans... We're going to have probably a baby boom. We're going to put that out there. As well as, because of the devastation, the complete devastation across all of Europe, they will need some place to get their resources from, and Europe can probably buy a lot of resources from the Americans. From us. And which might lead us into a golden age of culture, fiscal wealth for America. And I think that'd be really cool. Especially with a somewhat lower population than we, what we started with. But Europe, they will be suffering from the extreme population decline for the next couple generations, probably. Maybe a few generations. Russia itself lost millions. Germany lost a oh, third of its entire population. It's like another 30 years war, but globally. Japan lost quite a few guys in our war against them, but not a whole ton. I mean, they're on all adults served like us, and they've got you know five and a half million, but they definitely suffered some casualties as well. Uh, you guys. I don't know who you're under. Don't really care who you're under. Just go ahead. Lucian Truscott. Oh, yeah. I'm confident in his abilities. Oh, look at this. This is finally wrapped up to be very good. A bunch of trapped Italians. Nothing better than a bunch of trapped Italians. All right. How much closer until Italy's fully uh, gone? Oh, they're pretty close. They're almost 10 million casualties in, and they're going to capitulate at the end of the day, probably. Awesome. And there they go. Very cool. All right, so I want all of you guys to. Oh, I should not have done that. Come here, split. You come here. I need you to do that. I want to send my tanks over here. I need you to finish up the Balkans. And you guys are doing okay as well. Nice rose is over here. Just go ahead and just end them. Just end them. Now we have to finish off Turkey, and then we have to finish off Spain, and then we'll have a little closeout, and then I'll come back with the rearrangement of world power and geopolitical borders. And, oh, oh, wow. I did not think the Turks would capitulate sooner than the um, Spanish. All right. Very cool. Oh, we're just waiting for the Spanish now, and then we will have a good time. All right, come on. Come on. Don't let the horses go. Opposition suffers defeat in the Senate. All right. Well, it is 1952. Uh, just... Everyone just come up here and take these guys out. That'd be great. How much closer is Spain? So, the Italians suffered 10 million casualties. You can take a look for this if you like. The Turks have taken four. The Germans have taken 20, 32 and a half. 
8 million from Vichy France, over a million from Croatia, and Spain is about to capitulate with the Axis suffering a total of almost 72 million dead soldiers, while our side has lost a total of 20 and a half. That is more than three, that's like three and a half times our casualties. Literally three and a half times. That's absolutely nuts. Glorious, it's done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I am going to rearrange this, the world order, and I will see you in just a moment. So, see you in just a little bit. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, this same episode. For me, it's almost a different episode, but regardless, this is the world as it stands. So, let's talk about North America first. So, obviously, I said that a couple episodes ago that we might as well just annex Canada. They were against us. They fought against us. They didn't want to be a part of us. They really wanted to take us over, so we were teaching the Canadians a lesson. You're now freaking American. There's no such thing as a Canadian anymore. But you will be... This will be all of America. This is all America, and this will definitely make us into what some might call a superpower. Central America, South America is pretty much all the same. Uh, I forgot to release this. Oh, God. Uh, uh, I forgot to release this. Uh, God, there's so many countries now. It's not even funny. Jesus. And as, as you can tell... Uh... Guinea. No. As you can tell, there are a lot of countries I did not release. Most of them are African, and I have an exp explanation for that in just a little bit. God dang it, where is it? There's too, there's too many countries we can release now. Everyone just stay together. Alright, yeah, let's release this, and then um, you'll see a little bit of magic here. And... Okay, cool. Mark. Mark. Transfer. Alright, so this is pretty much the biggest change here. In South America. Actually, this is really the only change. Anyways, South America. Let's take a look at Europe. So, let's start up at the top. So, I released Sweden. Or, I didn't release Sweden, but I gave Sweden Norway because they historically had Norway. And using Sweden as a somewhat of a moderate power, they can keep the Nordic countries under control. Obviously, we have the Republic of Finland here. Uh, I'm not going to show you every single country leader because that would take a lot of time. But interesting flag, Finland. Very interesting. Uh, Sweden, of course, is led by this guy, Hansen. Uh, what's up next? We have Santa Claus in Denmark. And, yeah, I'm not going to show you all the leaders. I did give Ireland all of Ireland. Uh, the UK has all the UK, except for Northern Ireland. They're still led by Winston Churchill. Free France is exactly the same as we left it under Charles de Gaulle. Spain is back under Manuel Azana. Portugal is Portugal. Belgium has been returned to Hubert Perlot. Uh, the Netherlands is back under this guy, and let's talk about this. So Germany, I have pretty much cut down Germany to size to pretty much our modern day borders, but not exactly. It's very similar to our modern day borders, but I did give them Luxembourg because I don't want any remnants of the HRE to come back. This is Hearts of Iron 4, and it is 1952. So Germany did get Luxembourg, just to make them pretty strong, but not too overpowered, as well as giving the Polish a large amount of former Eastern Germany. Now, that being said... The Germans still own Königsberg, because that is such a major metropolitan city with six out of three radio stations. Regardless, I think that would be a very good thing for the Germans to keep, just because that is has almost always been historically German, and Russians would own this? Pfft, no. It's not. It's Königsberg. It's German. So I gave them that little enclave. Uh, obviously, Lithuania, Latvia. These are honestly kind of big. Yeah. Yeah, and then Lithuania, Mr. Nobody, Estonia. Uh, I have released the Republic of Belarus, as well as the Republic of the Ukraine. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much the country. Slovakia, the Czech Republic is here. The Republic of Austria with Sud Tyrol, because Tyrol is Austrian. Don't tell me otherwise. Um, Slovenia is here. Uh, Croatia, regular Croatia. The Republic of Croatia. Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, uh, Montenegro, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria. Uh, the difference between Hungary and Romania. So here... I wanted to make sure that no one really in Europe was too overpowered. That's why I gave the Poles a ton more uh, territory than what they began with, especially if since I released Belarus. So that stripped Poland of a lot of power, but I gave them a lot of German power to weaken the Germans and strengthen the Poles. But the thing with Romania and Hungary, at this point, this is almost, I would say, equal. Maybe the Romanians might be a little stronger than the Hungarians. But I'd give the Hungarians Northern Transylvania. Hopefully they'll stop fighting with each other about who owns this. I forgot about Southern Slovakia, but Slovakia doesn't have a claim on that, so it doesn't even matter. Serbia might be a little bit too strong. 
Uh, yeah, that might be a little bit too strong, but I don't want to make Hungary too powerful. Regardless, Serbia really wasn't a problem for us. Uh, we have Greece here, the Hellenic Republic. Italy, of course, is here as well without Sutarol. Uh, I did take over Istanbul, or which we will rename Constantinople. It's very interesting to see that Russia has a claim on Istanbul. But I'm going to keep this under American administration right now. We also have the Turkish Republic of Turkey here. Uh, I did liberate a bunch of the Middle East just because my overall plan was, yes, it's, it's, it's Israel, not Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, just because overall I don't want people to rebel against being basically my puppet. I want them to be kind of self-governing without too much interference with me, but they are still under my power, and that's ultimately why I released a lot of puppets, but not all of them. That being said, let's talk about Africa. Africa is still mostly owned by me. I have released South Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia for some reason, as well as Morocco. So I did this because, actually, I did this just because I needed people in Africa, who are Africans, to keep order in Africa. So that's why I have the Moroccans and Egyptians, so they'll help control northern Africa if they're going to be rebellions. Morocco also has the duty of making sure that pretty much Western Africa doesn't rebel if they get angry. That's why I released Ethiopia, because I think they're pretty good people. I gave them a lot of extra territory to help govern. That'll make them even stronger. But Central Africa will be kind of a problem. That's why I also released South Africa to help deal with any rebellions there. So that's why I made Africa that way, and they got a lot of good resources that I want to keep. Let's move on. So we have the Russian Federation, which has been stripped of a lot of... Oh my goodness. A lot of power, including the Crimea. The Crimean is Ukrainian. I don't even love that, right? So I stripped pretty much the Soviet Union, of what was the former Soviet Union, of pretty much all Central Asia, as well as the Caucasus. So we have Azerbaijan, we have Armenia, we have Georgia. Uh, actually, I should have given Iran something, but they don't deserve anything. They didn't join the war until it was too late. So we have Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, what is this? Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan is back here, the original ally, as well as Tajikistan. Now, because of the... Ooh, this is... Republic of Pakistan. Uh, oh, no, Kashmir. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to make sure that this doesn't get too hairy. I'll give them that. So we have Pakistan here, under, of course, my puppetry. As well as American Raj, which actually might be a little bit too strong. They should really release Bangladesh. But regardless, this is how it looks for now, so that they can kill each other if they need to, but hopefully not. I don't want to make anyone too powerful. I've given a lot of territory back to the Chinese. Not all the territory yet. I mean, we have Mongolia, but the Chinese aren't fully ready for a billion-person republic. Not yet. They're getting closer, but not yet. And the same idea with Africa, I did the same with Southeast Asia because this is a hotbed of activity. We might see in the next couple of decades some major rebellions because there's a guy named Ho Chi Minh who's a piece of crap who wants to rebel. Maybe, I don't know, we have a beginning Secret Service agency that's looking into potential counter-terrorist operations and uh, things like that. And same thing for the, the Indies here, the former Dutch Indies. And I have released Burma because I, I just have way too many things to you know garrison without being overburdened. And of course I have Australia here, as well as the New Zealanders. Peter Fraser. So that's pretty much the world. I mean, oh, actually, let's give this island to Japan because they were a great ally in our war after we nuked them a billion times. So that's pretty much the world. Yeah, Germany is basically like our timeline Germany, except they own Königsberg, which is should rightfully be given back to Germany from Russia today, but whatever. They also have Luxembourg, but I think this world is pretty cool now. Uh, obviously, it would be cool to come back to this game in like 70 years, but there's no game like that. But regardless, uh, what's your opinion on this world? Uh, other than that, um, yeah, we spent 30 days. This is the 30th episodes we spent with the Man the Guns DLC in our first campaign with it. So it was definitely interesting. We've been through two patches since then, or two hotfixes, and... We'll have to just pretty much see what the next episode and what Paradox has for us. So with that in mind, guys, please, thank you very much, first of all. Thank you very much for watching this video, watching the campaign. Uh, leave a like if you like the video. Leave a like for this being the final episode in this campaign. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you tomorrow, probably starting in Europe, as Communist Britain. Probably. With that in mind, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.